we are given a plot of yield strength versus grain size to the negative one half power for a 70-30 copper zinc cartridge brass. From this plot, for part A, we are asked to determine sigma naught and k sub y, the coefficients in the Hall-Petsch equation, and for part B, we are then asked to use those coefficients to predict the yield strength of this alloy when an average grain diameter of 1 times 10 to the negative 3 millimeters is available. So for this problem, let's begin by part A by writing out the Hall-Petsch equation, which is shown here. Sigma y is our yield strength. D is the grain size, which we're raising to the negative 1 half power. And then sigma naught and k sub y are the two Hall-Petsch coefficients that we're going to be asked to solve for. If you take a look at how this plot looks, it's linear. But it's only linear because x is d to the negative 1 half when plotted against sigma y, our yield strength. Therefore, because it's linear, it should have the form y equals mx plus b. Or in other words, y would be here equals b plus mx. What that's telling us is that the y-intercept will be b, and the slope right here, m, is going to be equal to the change in y over the change in x. So that allows us to solve for k sub y, which would be one way to solve for this. We simply need to pick out two points so that we can determine our change in y over our change in x. For example, right here I have the point 4 and 75, and up here I have the point 12 and 175. Let's use those points to determine our slope for this question. Taking these points, we simply need to do the change in the vertical or the change in horizontal. Or in other words, 175 minus 75 divided by 12 minus 4. Punching in values, we find that k sub y is equal to 12.5 megapascals multiplied by millimeters to the 1 half value. Now that we know k sub y, we can go ahead and solve for sigma naught by writing out one of the equations we had on the previous page. 75 megapascals will be equal to sigma naught, which we're going to solve for, plus 12.5 megapascals millimeters to the 1 half multiplied by 4 millimeters to the negative 1 half value. Solving for sigma naught, I get that this is equal to 25 megapascals. Now that we know both sigma naught and k sub y are Hall-Petsch coefficients, we should be able to solve for the yield strength for any arbitrary grain size, which is what we're asked to do in part b. We're now told that the grain size is 1 times 10 to the negative third millimeters, and they want us to find the yield strength. So the yield strength is what we're going to be solving for. Here's our two Hall-Petsch coefficients that we solved for previously in part a. We simply need to plug in 1 times 10 to the negative 3 millimeters, raise it to the negative 1 half power, and then solve. When we solve for this, we find that this is actually equal to 420 megapascals. Or in other words, this yield strength is larger than the values that we took off the plot previously because the grain size is smaller.